You want to go to jail too? Pick up that kid. Pick up the kid. Pick up the kid. Bro, she's holding on to the baby. Yeah, so let go. Will you call her? Go ahead and call. Take the baby, please. You're under arrest, Sammy. Stop resisting. Look at Leo. Stop resisting. On September 18, 2018, Pasco County, Florida resident Tammy Hallman was forcefully removed from her home after years of being harassed by the Pasco County Sheriff's Office. It all started when my son got in trouble. The police just start coming to our house multiple times a day, harassing us and, and just, it was ridiculous to the point where nobody wanted to even be at their own home. It was a very scary feeling. It was really uneasy, um, it interrupted our lives. I would be sitting in jail, worried about my kids, wondering what I did to deserve this. I had no understanding about anything other than that. The truth is that the first arrest of uh, my son began the uh, enormous amount of uh, police activity at my home for no reason. And I'm gonna call it harassment because that's what they called it. Come on, man. Can you come talk to us? Why, you have warrants? Then why won't you come talk to us? Yeah, we're just looking for Delana here. Hello, is Bobby here? Tyler, open the door, man. We're just coming to check up oh, on yeah, you because I haven't talked to you in a while. I'm Corporal O'Hate, I'm the one who spoke to you on the phone. Yeah. Anthony here? No, he's not. He's not here. Is he hanging out with some friends? In 2011, 35 year old Chris Nako was appointed sheriff of Pasco County. Sheriff Nako set out to reimagine policing in Pasco County by adopting a controversial model of policing called predictive policing that was designed to stop crime before it even happened. One of NACO's squads, known as the Strategic Targeted Area Response Team, set out into their community with various lists of names, harassing residents they suspected might commit unspecified future crimes along with their family members. When I was on my way to jail, the officer began to tell me that if they're coming out to your house, they're, they're going to get you with something. Either it's a code violation, they're gonna take you to jail, they'll get you for a seatbelt violation, whatever it is, they will come after you and they will enforce their zero tolerance policy and any means possible. Right, so here's, here's the policy in the agency, I'll explain it to you so it makes sense. If people have themselves or their people that live in the house are committing crimes and victimizing the community, then the direction we receive from our sheriff's office from the top down is to go out there and every single violation that that person commits to enforce it upon them. This list uses a point system based on interactions with the law. The points are tallied up and the sheriff's office is left with their list of citizens to target. Yeah, they have like a list of people that used to get in trouble but don't anymore and we just make sure everybody's doing good. All right. You staying out of trouble? Citizens are given points for offenses, or even for being suspected of an offense. Points are also given for missed court dates, probation violations, and appearing in five or more police reports, even if they were only listed as a witness or a victim. A former Pasco County deputy was ordered to randomly show up the homes with the sole purpose of making the family uncomfortable sometimes showing up as many as five times in one day. They would even go as far as sitting outside the home overnight. Come outside and find 
Tell him we know he's there. <laughs> Tyler. Tyler, come outside. Usually when they were frequenting us, it was usually about anywhere from once a day to multiple times a day. There may be a break where they weren't there for a few days and then we'll come back. Some families were harassed more than others. Is Donnie here? Is Donnie home? Hey, is Donnie home? I'm looking for Donnie. Is Donnie around? We're looking for Donnie. You know that, right? Hey, morning, Donnie. How you doing? They were always targeting my family. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been here several times a day or multiple times a week. They, we were definitely being targeted. Absolutely, definitely. They were coming, I mean, at least every day and multiple times a day when you start gathering, you know, what my kids would tell me when they were there, when I would see them there. And these kids are scared. All they've seen is these guys take their brother to jail, their dad to jail. They've yelled at their mother that they're gonna take her to jail. And now they're yelling at them. Come to the door, talk to us. Whenever we run out and try to bring back dinner or something, the kids are getting bangs on the door. And these officers are, are, are wanting us to talk to my kids too. And my kids don't know any more than me. Every single time I try to give a little bit to you guys, I end up with this. And it's even 10 times worse than it started out as. Many times when the police would come to our house, they were very disrespectful. They, they didn't care who, who we were. They, they thought of, they looked at us as if we're not an officer, then we're not one of them. Man, listen, we don't have time for your game. You're an idiot. You're inside of a house. How are you being detained, moron? Yeah, you're fat and ugly. Shut the hell up. Hey, I want to let's stir something up with this. Stir with what? Whatever you saw, which is police talk for their bunch of f***ing assholes. Hey, last time we made her cry. Huh? Yeah. My neighborhood was already a very, very safe neighborhood. That's why we moved there. Inevitably, the only police activity was when they were coming to arrest somebody at my home. Nothing was ever stolen from my vehicles. Nothing was ever burgled at my home, except if you count the sheriff's department. They're the ones that were at my house. They're the ones that were taking things that didn't belong to them. They were the ones entering without a warrant. It's the police that I have to worry about. And it's the same for my kids too. And it shouldn't be that way. They're the ones that we should be able to call when we need help, not be fearful of. The only thing they were doing was taking me to jail or exploiting me by taking my money from me. Should I start writing the citation? Huh? Should I start writing the citation? His dad's in there. Well, I'll write it to him. Yeah, absolutely. One day they were here, they gave me, I believe the day that they were here, it was for numbers on my mailbox. I didn't have any numbers on the mailbox. So they gave me a citation. The first citation violation I received was for overgrown grass. The following day, they came back for another citation for chickens that I had in my yard. The next one I received was for my double jet ski trailer uh, being parked on the opposite side of my five by eight enclosed trailer. This one is for having the boats trailers. They have to be on one side of the property. You can't have them on one on each side of the property. They were trying to claim that there was a snake crawling into my garage and somehow that that's a violation. Uh, numbers not being visible on the front of my house. This one here is the address. That uh, light is covering up that address. The reality was these guys were taking a ruler and measuring dandelion. And this one is for overgrown. The, the grass underneath and on the side and the back of the house is over 12 inches. Accumulation of junk and debris? Uh, what else they got? Uh, I don't know. Piece of fence. Uh, well, you got violations here, so it's not like he made them up. They just tape them to your door. So there's a possibility that you may not even get it. And this is a court date that you are required to attend. So if you don't attend that court date because you didn't receive the letter, then you're in even more trouble. Okay, Tammy, I'm going to leave your citation in the door. Just make sure you make the court date or else you're gonna have a warrant. I believe it's their way of getting, showing that their crime rights are going down is to just chase people away. Deputies meet weekly to discuss who to target. 
sharing information on targeted persons, including lists of their associates and family members. It got so bad that I packed up and I moved my family that night out of Pasco County. If we get this family to move, then we show that we have less crime. At the end of each year, deputies are rewarded for their harassment. Other deputies boasted in their performance reviews that their harassment succeeded in getting a target's family member evicted from her home. Every single time the Pasco County Sheriff's Department arrested me, they dropped every charge because there was no evidence. In 2021, four plaintiffs, including Tammy and Robert, sued to challenge the sheriff's program. I know that if nobody stops them, they're gonna to continue to do this to other people. I got put on some secret list to be targeted because the truth is they wanted me out of the neighborhood. I'm hoping to get out of this lawsuit justice. I want the policy to end. This, nobody should be going through this. And I guess in a way this, without being lawyers, the way I can contribute. And I think that's my job. This should never have taken place in the first place. It, this, is, this is a horrible policy. This is, this is against everyone's rights. And it's just disgusting. I don't, I. If this intelligence led policing program was so great, then I'd like to find one person that helped. NACO's program violates the Fourth Amendment right to be secure from unreasonable searches and seizures. Pasco's Sheriff's Office does not give notice to targeted people or their parents that they've been placed on a list or the opportunity to try to get off that list. Law enforcement should never show up at your home, interrogate you, and refuse to leave just because someone in the home was placed on a list. This is one of those situations where we have to win. There is no other outcome. No matter how bad sometimes things get, you just have to keep believing that right is still right and wrong is still wrong. If everybody could do that, this place will be a better place.